Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, aiming for infinity. I would like to have my C of K integration go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Let's back up for a second to show you where we left off in our last section. We have these two equations where the C of K integral uh, over on the right to give you the C of K goes from minus L to plus L. Now here, this is our Fourier series generalized to a Fourier integral where we have a continuous variable, the variable k, and this is how we get our coefficients. Notice that when you build up f of x, think of that as building it up with a weighting factor here with each of the e to the plus i k x pieces. Then when you want to solve for the c of k, you have a e to the minus i k x, that kind of a term. Here you have 1 over pi, here you have 1 over 2. So I'm going to simply make this l infinity in the second case, so I have two integrals that go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So here we do it. We simply state it. And then we back up for a second and say, wait a minute, the C of K came from L C of N. We made this assignment. Well, if L goes to infinity, doesn't the C of K then blow up in our face? Well, C of N is C of K over L doesn't that go to zero? So maybe here when L goes to infinity the C sub n's go to zero and this is defined. This is okay in some finite way. Well I'm gonna assume that's the case and then show you that it's consistent. So for now let's just take these equations as being the given and I'm going to substitute c of k into here to see if I can get f of x back again. Now be careful. x here has a unique identity while x over here does not. This is an integration variable. It integrates out. So this could just as well be a y, y and a y, or a z, 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 or an x prime, x prime, x prime. Just like when we had summation cases in the discrete case like n or m or j or k, they are summation variables. This is an integration variable. So to be careful, I will pick here this x, x, x to be an x prime, x prime, x prime, which gets integrated over to get the c of k. Then the c of k can be plugged into here. And when we look at all that, which is going to be messy, can we get back f of x? So let's do it we take here f of x, 1 over pi, and that's the integral of the c of k, which I simply insert all that stuff in there, and then I have e to the i k x, and I had the dk integration. I have two integrals now. First step, I'm going to move that exponential in. I move that exponential in, and by doing that, I can now couple those two exponentials together, and when I do that, I'll have one exponential, e to the i k, where I have the quantity here in parentheses, x minus x prime. Notice that I have slipped the dx prime in differential out and the dk in because k and x prime, these uh, have nothing to do with each other in terms of the dependency, so I can integrate either of them first. So here we have the f of x prime pulled out of this integral since the k integration will be independent of the x prime and I've moved the pi in with the 2. Do you see the magic? Do you recognize this? Dirac comes to the rescue. What is that? That is simply the integral representation of the Dirac delta function. Remember that integral representation is given by this and if you here have an x minus an x prime uh, here then instead of having a delta x you'll have a delta of x minus x prime. So you have the delta here uh, of this part up in here which is multiplying the k. Well, that's amazing because if that's what that is, that means when I integrate, 
out the dk, I get the magic delta function, and then the magic delta function lets this other integral melt away, which means that this is going to sift out f of x, which is what I need to get. This is like kind of like a miracle here. So by doing this substitution, the Dirac delta function kicks in, saves the day, and we have it. So we're very happy with this, and we can summarize the results as what we started with, because it checked out, and this is the Fourier transformation, uh, transform here, the Fourier transform of this f of x, this is it. This is the Fourier transform, and this is called the inverse Fourier transform, where you get the f of x back from the c of k. So the c of k is the Fourier transform of f of x, and then this gives the inverse transform. I'm going to clean this up in the next section so there's a nice symmetry, but you can define the Fourier transform this way. We're going to define it a little bit differently so that it's easier to remember and there's a nice symmetry to it.